After what seems like an eternity, 9.1 is finally here. Hallelujah! A ton of new PvP driven changes and a fresh new exciting arena season begins. While we're sure this season will eventually be perfectly balanced like they always are, there are some classes potentially looking to be head and shoulders above the rest. So whether you're wanting to main something powerful and new in 9.1, re-rolling to achieve that easy gladiator, or just simply want an idea of what's looking good, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the best classes to main for each role in patch 9.1. But before we get into it, it's time for our question of the day. What spec do you think is going to dominate season 2? For me, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Mistweaver Monks. Mistweaver remained almost unplayable for the whole duration of season 1. With 9.1, they receive a ton of buffs and new PvP talents. And what says balance like going from one end of the spectrum to the other, right? But let us know what spec you think in the comments below. And if you're looking for some guides to get a jump start in the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow. We will be updating all of our courses for 9.1, teaching you how to play exactly like the pros. Our guides break down everything you need to know about your class and have secret tips and tricks that only the best players know. Our website features commentaries directly from pro players that teach you everything you need to know about specific matchups, including inside information that you won't find anywhere else. We also offer a 250 rating money back guarantee for those that use the site, meaning you got nothing to lose. So if you want to dominate the competition in Shadowlands Season 2 and beyond, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. For this video, we're going to be recommending our top three picks for each role, so melee, ranged, and healers. Let's kick things off with melee, shall we? In which, our first spec is going to be Feral Druid. If you hung about during the end of season lull, you would have seen a huge rise in ferals, and more specifically, jungle cleave. Feral players were adapting from their previous, more burst-oriented playstyle with either Kyrian or Night Fae, into a more sustained damage and spread pressure build, focusing and playing around the next Necro Lord Covenant ability Adaptive Swarm combined with the drought of Deep Focus Legendary. And with 9.1, this build is only getting improved upon, with one of the biggest changes coming with the patch overall, and that's the addition of the Wicked Claws PvP talent. What you can take away from this is that now Feral Druids have a healing reduction effect. So now not only will Ferals be doing this strong, consistent pressure, but will also have a healing reduction effect on top of it. More importantly though, and why we expect to see Ferals do so well come 9.1, is that this opens up a ton of different composition options. Comps like Feral Mage, Feral Lock, Feral Shadow Priest, or even Feral Death Knight. These are all compositions we've seen jump in and out of the limelight through various times, but have always just been lacking any form of healing reduction. So with this one change, we'll expect to see a lot more diversity and not just jungle cleave every single game now. Not to mention the impact this will have on 2v2, as now Ferals have every tool required to be the most dominant 2v2 melee spec hands down. The whole idea of comp diversity does seem to be Blizzard's overall goal with these changes, as they have also subsequently buffed leader of the pack as this previously only worked with physical abilities now though it can proc from spells so another nudge in the direction of compositions like feral mage or feral lock or maybe we're just giving blizzard too much credit here who knows to go alongside the addition of wicked claws and the updated leader of the pack ferals have also received a buff to high winds previously only reducing the damage of the target this now goes on to also reduce healing so imagine you're playing a healer you just came out of a full trap or polymorph then followed up with a cyclone after you get out of that cyclone you're going to have to heal your partner up while doing 30% less healing. Overall though, with how strong ferals were in 9.0.5, combined with these new additions will mean we'll likely see them being one of, if not the most dominant melee, and without a doubt a great class to main if you're looking for a hybrid driven melee. For our next melee, I want you to think back to season 1. This was one melee spec which did ridiculous levels of burst damage. So ridiculous in fact, blinking at the wrong time could often be detrimental. Yes, I'm of course talking about Retribution Paladins. I think everybody expected a ton of retribution damage nerfs, maybe some rebalances to their damage, moving some away from avenging wrath into some more consistent pressure, or maybe some added mobility tools to help with their lack of mobility. What we got wasn't quite that, but it's for sure going to keep Rets at the top of the melee food chain come 9.1, and that's the addition of the Judgments of the Pure PvP talent. Okay, so simply put, what this does is dispels a poison, disease, and magic effect every time you press judgment on all allies within your aura. Sounds strong, right? Well, yes, standalone this is an incredibly strong ability, but then you factor in Divine Toll, which yes, also works with this talent. But why stop there? There's also a new legendary Divine Resonance, which as you can see gives you another judgment every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. So the combination and downright ridiculous synergy of these abilities is going to go on to make Retribution the new Exodia, where no magic debuff is ever safe from their grasp. Enjoy landing any crowd control, and especially enjoy trying to do any damage 
damage as an elemental or shadow priest against one. Now, granted, there have been a few nerfs, a 20% reduction to Word of Glory from Healing Hands, a minor nerf to Aura Reckoning to reduce the damage of the empowered auto attack and the rate at which it stacks up, and also a small hit to the added judgment damage coming from Lawbringer. Overall though, these nerfs in the grand scheme of things are extremely minor if you want a high burst melee with a ton of added utility. Look no further than Retribution, definitely without a doubt remaining to be a top pick to main in 9.1. Our third and final pick for best melee spec to main is going to be Frost Death Knight. Honestly, we were torn here. Rogues, survival hunters, and warriors are all worthy contenders, but in terms of new abilities and potential strength, Frost Death Knight seems to just edge ahead. Frost Death Knights were by no means S tier going into patch 9.1, but were still extremely strong. Well, despite a few nerfs to anti magic zone for PvE reasons, they've gone on to receive some very interesting changes. First of all, was the return of Strangulate. Previously being only available to blood, this now gives Death Knights and their compositions some very potent kill pressure. You can still put enemies into the blender with death grip, abomination limb, blinding sleep, and chill streak. But now also after that crowd control chain, have the ability to strangulate for another 4 seconds. This just further adds to the already strong wombo combo that death knights are capable of. On top of that, the other most noteworthy change was the removal of heart stop aura. But in its place, the addition of two very strong talents, bitter chill, which causes you to remove 8% of your target's haste, this used against almost any caster is going to make their life a living nightmare, especially as almost every caster looks to stack haste. Then to further add insult to injury comes the addition of Shroud of Winter, which simply put reduces the range of any target you're on by 30%, meaning most casters will be reduced to a 28 yard range. This can be very detrimental to any caster wanting to secure either damage or crowd control onto your healer. It really seems as if Blizzard are kiting Frost Death Knights to be the anti-caster, as they've even received a new talent called Spell Warden, buffing your rune of spell warding by 100%. In 9.0.5, Frost Death Knight didn't exactly lack in the damage department, and this is only being improved upon, with huge buffs to Pillar of Frost and Breath of Sindragosa, which more than make up for the measly 10% nerf to Chill Streak. So if we end up seeing a more caster driven meta, Frost Death Knights will definitely be thriving. The final reason we're likely to see Frost Death Knights do well is that their preferred healer, Mist Weaver Monks, are receiving numerous buffs, which will open up a lot of Frost Death Knight and Mist Weaver driven cleaves. Alright then guys, that's our top 3 melee picks to main in patch 9.1 prediction. Like we mentioned, we expect Rogue warriors and survival hunters to also be performing very well okay then guys up next we're looking at our picks for ranged classes throw your mind back to the end of battle for azeroth there was one spec which scales exponentially with stats destruction warlock destruction warlock is a spec which like a fine wine only gets better as expansions go on more mastery means they do more damage and take less more haste means those chaos bolts which one shot you will be coming out oh so much quicker on top of that destruction is receiving some changes to Chaos Bolt. Focused Chaos, the PvP talent, is being removed, and to compensate, Destruction receives a 35% damage increase to Chaos Bolt. This does result in a net 5% damage loss in PvP, but what's overlooked here is that this opens up a free talent slot. If you've played Destruction before, you would know the quarrels between trying to pick your PvP talents, if it's melee, you want demon armor, if it's casters, you want nether ward, if it's both, then you have no free talent slots. But now, as you're no longer locked into picking Focused Chaos, you can freely pick up talents like Fell Fissure or Cremation, or even the new PvP talent Bonds of Fell. This is looking very strong. Not only is it a 50% snare, but can also force enemies to be locked down in your line of sight. The final change Destruction is receiving is another new PvP talent, Shadow Rift. This one is very interesting, and could, if used correctly, end up being incredibly overpowered, giving you the ability to reposition enemies out of line of sight from their healers. Alongside these positive changes, what we think will benefit Destruction most going to 9.1 though is actually Actually, the buffs to other classes. Frost Mages, Feral Druids, and Assassination Rogues in specific are all looking to rise in strength, all of which make perfect partners for Destruction Warlocks, especially Frost Mages. Which just so happens to be a perfect segue into our second ranged pick to main for patch 9.1, Frost Mage. Frost Mage, similar to Destruction Warlock, was very strong at the end of patch 9.0.5, just heavily overshone by its fire counterpart. Even then, Frost was still dominant in caster cleaves like MLD, for example. Now, with fire receiving some much warranted nerfs focused around combustion, 
combustion, it paves the way for frost to take the reins. The main reason we believe this to be the case is the massive 85% buff to frost bolt, meaning specifically in caster cleaves where you're in a double threat composition like MLS, Shatter, or even Mage Elemental, you're going to be able to put out a ton of pressure. Granted, is offset a tiny bit with the 50% nerf on Deep Shatter though, but even then your shatters will still hit a little bit harder, but more importantly, your consistent damage will be through the roof. A spell frost that will be missing come 9.1 though is Kleptomania, which is now made unique to Arcane Mage, another reason why we expect to see this shift of mages being pushed more into consistent damage caster cleaves rather than the more setup oriented compositions, which is also further imposed with a new PvP talent. May, I mean, frost mages are getting an ice wall. This acts exactly how you would expect it to. It creates a giant wall which is a line of sight, so you can trap enemies away from pillars, block off escapes, and just generally allow yourself or your teammate more time to cast. Can you see why Destruction Warlock Frost Mage is shaping up to be incredibly strong? You trap them away from the pillar and hurl Frost Bolts and Chaos Bolts, leaving enemies nowhere to line of sight. For our third and final ranged class, we've got a spec which surged to dominance at the latter half of Season 1 and is shaping up to only be stronger going into Season 2, Beast Mastery Hunters. Still remaining to deal absurd amounts of damage ever since the buff to the Venthyr Covenant and the PvP Trinket set now affecting their pets, Beast Mastery Hunters are getting two new very strong additions, first of which is Chimiral Sting. This talent is shaping up to be kinda ridiculous. It does very high damage before, then rotates either with a 20% reduced damage or healing effect from Viper Venom, which stacks with Mortal Strike effects, a Silence from Spider Venom, and a 90% slow from Scorpid Venom, which cannot be shapeshifted or removed by tools like Vanish or even Freedom. If people dispel this, it will just proc the next one and so on and so forth. The Undred talent is Kindred Beasts. This at first glance doesn't look all that great, but the important part here is the Command Pet's unique ability cooldown being reduced by 50%. This reduces the cooldown of all your pet special abilities currently, so Dash, your pet's Mortal Strike, and even Roar of Sacrifice. You have to remember that Feral Druid has also received some buffs, so we predict Jungle Cleave to be one of, if not the most dominant compositions going into the patch. And standalone Beast Mastery Hunters were already ranked at S plus tier in our previous tier list, so with 9.1 only adding to their strength, so expect to see Beast Master Hunters continuing to dominate the arena. Okay then, that's our three recommended ranged classes to main. Last but not least, we got our healers. The first healer making it into our top three is going to be Restoration Druid. Restoration Druids are remaining for the most part the same from 9.0.5, with the only real noticeable changes being the addition of the new PvP talent Keeper of the Grove, which won't really have an impact inside of Arena. And the buff to High Winds reducing healing done as well as damage, again, nothing too impactful. The main reasons we're rating Druids so highly going to 9.1 is a plethora of indirect buffs, the biggest of which is the removal of Kleptomania. Druid was very strong previously, but had no counterplay to a mage removing all your healing with the press of a button. With this now only being available to arcane mages in which we don't expect to see too often, the strength of Druid has risen substantially. On the flip side, many classes which Druid synergizes well with are also receiving buffs, Frost Mages being the main one. As we've all seen before, the synergy between Restoration Druid and Frost Mage when both classes are strong is obscene. So, as a subsequent result, what we expect to see is a lot of Druid Mage compositions rise to the top, like RMD, MLD, and even God Comp, all with Restoration Druids at their core. Next up, our second healer making it on the list is going to be Restoration Shaman. Restoration Shamans are again also only receiving some minor changes, the main one being the addition of two new PvP talents, the biggest of which being Unleash Shield. This is a very unique spell which changes depending on what shields you currently have active, but if you put up Lightning Shield, you can knock enemies away. If you have Earth Shield, you can root targets, and if you have Water Shield, you can summon a Whirlpool which will reduce the damage healing of enemies by 50% while they're inside. The other addition being Living Tide, a buff to Healing Tide totem. While we don't believe this will see all that much play, it does provide some very strong healing, so maybe against Dot Cleaves or similar, it could be a niche pick. What's making us believe Restoration Shamans will be one to main in 9.1 though is how we predict the meta to play out. How it's shaping right now is that almost all melee classes which Shamans pairs up well with are looking to be strong, so classes like Death Knight, Retribution, Demon Hunters, and Warriors. The addition of Unleash Shield is also going to add to this. Doing the standard Frost DK grip into Blinding Sleet with an Unleashed Water Shield on top is going to be a ton of pressure. Also though, like we mentioned, we predict a lot of Caster Cleaves rising to the top, mainly MLD. Restoration Shamans again historically do very well into Caster Cleaves due to the disruption from Wind Shear and Grounding Totem. So with how things are shaping up, while not really receiving any glaring buffs, we still predict Restoration Shamans to be at the top of the healing food chain. Probably seeing the biggest shift of any spec is in 9.1. It's fair to say Mist Weaver's players got the short end of the stick in 
4.5, with the spec being essentially unviable the entire season 1. Well, Blizzard have set out to fix that, and we think that monks are set to look very strong. What monks suffered with in season 1 was a way to survive while being trained, as having no defensives able to be used while in stun left them unable to survive after their gladiator's medallion was down. To help combat this is the addition of two separate PvP talents, Dematerialize, which will flat out reduce your damage taken by 30%, and then an extra 10% for each second of a stun, meaning by the end of a kidney shot you'll be taking next to no damage. The other talent is Eminence, which received a rework. On top of reducing the cooldown of your Transcendence transfer, you can now also use it while stunned. This is going to help combat another issue Mistweavers had, and that's avoiding crowd control. And if we see the rise of Shadow Priests or Affliction Warlocks, or even Elemental Shamans, Mistweavers are perfectly kitted to deal with them having the new addition of Peace Weaver combined with the Dispel from Healing Spheres. Overall though, these changes were exactly what Mistweaver needed to bring them back into the meta, and we expect to see them pairing up with Frost Death Knights to play various types of melee cleave. And there you have it guys, those are our three recommended picks for healers, melee, and range for patch 9.1. If you like this video, be sure to drop a like and comment your thoughts on the 9.1 patch down below. If you want to stay up to date on future uploads, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. As always, we will be giving you more Season 2 content, including updated tier lists, class guides, challenges, and more. For now though, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.